talk on the camera, but now this is live. So, uh, that's good. Nope. Actually, I would like to catch up with him. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't mind too, but uh, um, we'll see. Like he said, yeah. he, you know, he ran in stories, but he didn't talk to anybody in Boston's story. So it seems like that's that's just the way it goes with these folks. Like they run a bunch of stories, they get it wrong, and they, uh, um, you know, they and they have every opportunity to, to to get the story correct. It's all caught on camera, and they can ask the person who's involved. But,
somebody else. Yeah, the you go in and, and say that you need security, but you claim to have security detail. Put the same person that said they need security here. I don't see no more threat to you all than it is to the, to the mayor. And the, 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 the whole thing, and the whole everything that was going on the last time, that was totally in a call for it. So that, that should have never happened to the individual. That should have never happened. I was here, I saw it, and it was foolishness. Pure on the door during foolishness. And he and I don't get along, and we may not have the best, but he, he did not be, deserve to be treated the way he was treated. And that, that, is, that is very disturbing to me. Because he's a human being, he had a right to be up there at that time. Then we come back and say, oh, security. What you going to mess with the mayor's security detail? Everything that's going on in this city. Sir, he signed up to talk about the GRTC bus stops. Do you want to address that? That's the same as why you stopped me now. Because I mean, I haven't been in in two minutes of my speech, and you didn't even decide now. Well, you went very far. But I didn't say anything about GRTC. I never, I never said, when I signed up, I never talked about GRTC. I said city issues like I always do. That's frustrating that, that you can cut me off and you had to speak this long. Now, very disappointed you, Mr. Sanders. Very disappointed. Because ultimately, as my uh, right as a citizen, you should have said that in the beginning. I never knew that anything had to do with GRTC. But if you want to talk about GRTC, the problem was I saw a woman that was in a, in a, a tank with a cane, I mean, with a, a walker that could have been my grandma with oxygen. She had to walk from um, six and Roy, all the way to the to the end of Lee Street, not to Lee. That was unacceptable. It's something that y'all have to do about that too, because you got people in walkers with oxygen tanks. It's hot now. The other the day, the bus was 100 degrees out and on the bus today with no AC. And you know what the RTC supervisor tells me? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, we just don't have the buses and services, and there's nothing we can do. And I mean, that's ultimately, that's a lot of issues that you have and you want to talk about GRTC. GRTC. There's a lot of things about GRTC I can talk about. And that's, that's ridiculous that that woman, they drove past City, um, City Hall and took her all the way to 6th and Broad. And she had to go to 6th and Broad. To, and, and the bus didn't stop at 6th and Broad for the, the 6th, the um, Woodlawn 6th. She had to walk all the way back to Leach. You have 30 seconds, ever. Would you like to summarize? Yes, Mr. Samuels. I'm done. Thank you. Mr. President. Ms. Trammell. Yes. Let me just say this to the last speaker. We're not trying to get security for us nine council members. We're trying to get security for in here and here. For the children that come down here, for the staff, for the citizens. I didn't say nothing about me. $950,000 was going to the teachers. The teachers that have to go into their pocketbooks and go into their own funds to pay for things for the children in the classroom. That money was going to go to those 700 teachers so they could be repaid. So it's not security plus 24 hours. That's why you see me at the crime scenes at 12 o'clock at night and 1 o'clock in the morning without police officers and my colleagues too. So thank you. Okay. Next speaker. Next speaker is Andrew Hildreth. President, Council, I'm Roger Hildreth, I live at 507 St. Christopher's Road. Today I'm presenting you with 67 signatures um, signed by citizens of Richmond. In addition, which is not here, are 20,304 additional signatures that have already been collected across the state, live. urging Medicaid for expansion. I'm going off live. For yeah. This includes signatures of 431 small business leaders, a group that is frequently and erroneously cited against Medicaid expansion. We are here to ask you to endorse the resolution before you. For me, there are only two reasons to support Medicaid expansion, and they are financial and humanitarian. According to a report issued by Chimera Economics and Analytics, a well-respected research firm of offices here in Richmond, Benefits for Virginia from Medicaid expansion would increase an estimated $1.7 billion and 15,000 new jobs in 2014 to $5.9 billion and 43,000 jobs in 2019. This is the difference about Medicaid.